Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, back with another episode in my uh, series of how to mod uh, a Game Boy to add a backlight. So, in this video, we'll be covering the, the actual biversion circuitry modification. So it's a little chip that's up in the corner here. And so we'll go through exactly how I did that, what chip I used, um, as well as what other chips you could possibly use in order to do this modification. So hopefully you guys... Uh, will enjoy the video that I made, so um, I guess we'll get on with it now. Okay, so I do not have any um, not inverter gate chips. Um, I was thinking about, I eventually probably will get a um, XOR so that I could actually control the inversion with the microprocessor then. Um, just with the single output, I can either toggle it um, inverted or not. But the next best thing is uh, this little chip here. It would, there's my hand. It's a 74HC uh, 00AN. And that is actually a uh, quad two input NAND gate. Um, so what I'm going to do is if you look at the truth table here, um, if I tie one of the inputs high, the other input will just always be out, uh, inverted on the output. Uh, so I can actually use this just by taking um, you know, one of the inputs on just two of the gates, tying it high, and then the pixel data will go into, say, A1 and A2, and then output will obviously be Y1 and Y2. So that's the great thing about logic is you can use what you have um, in order to, to make what you want, essentially. One thing I could do, actually, I only have one of these chips. I think I desoldered it from something. But um, you can actually use... Uh, four NAND uh, gates in order to make an XOR, but I would only have one XOR then. It, so I need two for the um, the four uh, four value two bit uh, LCD data. But anyway, uh, here's the pinout. So I'm just gonna um, use the first two gates probably. Um, all the other gates, it's important to tie the the gates low so that uh, the chip doesn't oscillate or have a high quiescent current draw. So anything that's not used will be tied low. Um, the outputs, I don't think they matter. I don't have to tie them. Once I tie these low, this will always be uh, high anyway. So it does not matter at all. So if I tie these low, um, tie B1 and B2 high. So I'll, I'll connect that to VCC here. Um, VCC will get 5 volts. Ground will be, well, ground obviously. And then A1 and A2 will come from the LCD data before the connector. And then after the connector, um, Y1 and Y2 will, will splice into there. And we have to make a single cut. So I've been, uh, let's see, found a Instructables, actually, um, from Switchy15. And they explain the, the general process of, of this guy here, which is um, all you have to do is cut these two traces here. Um, and intercept the signal between 1 and 3 and 2 and 4. Uh, so that's exactly what we're doing here. And the output of our, uh, our gate, so Y1 and Y2, will go to 3 and 4, and then once we make the cut, 1 and 2 will go to A1 and A2 likewise. So I'm going to solder this up off camera because it's really difficult um, you know, cutting and soldering things with the camera in the way. Uh, but I'll show you guys, guys the results afterwards and it working, so I'll see you then. Okay, so finished soldering. Uh, wasn't that bad, but I have a really cruddy iron with me. I don't have my um, nice temperature controlled one. So I pretty much just dead bug soldered it using uh, magnet wire essentially, and I used a little clipping from an LED uh, the lead from it to make kind of a ground bar there so I could um, short all the unused inputs and the ground together easily. So anyway, it's all in there, not insulated yet. I'm going to put some tape or something. I'm going to tuck it probably on this upper part here, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, that it does work indeed. This is going to be very difficult to do, isn't it? Okay, there we go. So the contrast is much, much better. It's not showing up that great on this screen, but in real life, it's a lot more vibrant. I can actually see everything. <laughs> I mean, the backlight definitely helps with that as well. I can tweak this contrast. Yeah, that looks perfect to me in real life. Let me see. Maybe I can kind of angle this. 
There we go. So yeah, you can see that everything uh, works. This is just me holding a battery. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it won't be like this um, in the final version. But yeah, that looks absolutely amazing. I'm still missing that line on the, um, the left-hand side, but I'm going to fix that once I uh, get my better soldering iron. I will absolutely destroy the screen if I use the, uh, the fire stick that I'm using right now. Barely constitutes as a soldering iron. It is absolutely atrocious. There's the chip, uh, soldered real messily. I'll probably redo this with a surface mount chip, and when I get a um, when I get back home to my actual real soldering iron. But yeah, you can see that um, everything works. Let me just start up the game. Yeah, you can see that looks pretty darn good. Uh, let me turn off the light. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, yeah, it looks a bit darker than, uh, than that in real life. But yeah, you can definitely see, you can actually make out the shades of gray, which uh, you couldn't really. There we go. That looks absolutely awesome. So definitely happy uh, with this modification here. Uh, just got to button it all up. Uh, luckily, the... The DMG Game Boy has plenty of room up here. What I was planning on doing, since I have an RGB backlight anyway, um, I was going to stick a microprocessor in there, similar to the pocket that I was modding. Um, and then I, I've written a software routine for a touch sensor. Um, so what I could have is a little piece of metal inside here that when you touch the outer case, it'll act as like a touch sensitive button. Maybe I'll have two buttons. Uh, one will be on off and the other one will be brightness or something like that or one cycles through uh, changing the color on the display the other one's brightness that would be pretty easy to implement and there's definitely plenty of room on the bottom here and on the top in order to add the circuitry for that so it's just a matter of programming that but yeah you can see when it's off now that I uh, inverted the LCD itself it looks black when it's off and when it comes on it, it automatically inverts the colors thanks to this uh, quad uh, NAND chip that I use there. So yeah, um, all in all this is coming along. This is by no means complete. Um, this will be a work in progress and I'll tidy up everything, all the soldering and whatnot once I actually get to uh, a decent soldering iron. But anyway, just wanted to give you guys a quick uh, video of, of me doing a biversion mod. This is the first time I've ever done one including the wiring and everything. I peeled off the uh, polarizing films and reflective backings on the LCDs on the pockets before, but first time doing it on the uh, original Game Boy, and I gotta say, pretty easy. Get thumbs up and shot there. It wasn't actually that hard at all. So anyway, if you guys like the video, like, comment, subscribe, do all that. You do what, what you guys do best. Yeah, and um, I, I'll put the uh, data sheet for the the chips and whatnot and where I got the backlight in the description down below as well as other backlights and whatnot on eBay so if you guys are interested in doing this mod yourself uh, you will be able to do so so anyway till next time I will see you guys later bye so you want to hear something weird uh, just shut this back together I guess the extra pressure uh, from adding the backlight when it's fully closed it fixed the last few lines that were out So everything works now. I just have the wiring out on the side now. I still got to uh, Resolder that internally, but as I said, I want to add a controller anyway. So yeah um, Everything works I've um, actually hooked up three potentiometers externally to a uh, lithium battery. And I'm just playing with the colors here, so I have a potentiometer per color, so I can change the uh, you know brightness of each one independently. So I can do just green. Contrast is kind of hard to get it to show up right on the uh, LCD here, and the knobs are a little bit finicky. But yeah, this is a nice uh, vibrant green color. Then I can turn up blue to get aqua. It's sort of whitish it looks like on the screen, but it's definitely aqua. Kind of a teal color in real life. Blue, for some reason, on the actual screen, it looks like it's inverting the pixels. It's a very deep blue color. I think it's um, not working out that well with the uh, LCD itself. Here's uh, sort of uh, kind of bluish, which is really nice and then if I turn up uh, let's turn down green and turn up red red is by far the most sensitive uh, because it has the lowest forward 
uh, drop of all the diodes. This will be easier to do with uh, PWM on a microprocessor, but here, get a nice purple, turn up red a little bit, turn up green, and turn down blue. Let's see, contrast kind of went out a bit. There we go. We can start slowly turning up red. I can get kind of yellow, oh, a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, this is very finicky. Maybe it'd be easier just to uh, get a slight dim glow and then turn up green. Nope, doesn't matter at all. I just had it a second ago too. There we go. So you can kind of see yellow. And then if I turn it up, it turns to orange. And then it just saturates completely at red. And yeah, the contrast uh, needs to be changed for the different colors to kind of compensate. Yeah, pretty interesting. I'll write a, a simple program for a pick so it can control this um, accurately using pulse width modulation. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys uh, some of the color combinations we can get. Um, I can sort of get white uh, if I'm very careful. Yeah, here we go. Maybe a little bit down on the uh, green. Very fiddly. You can see... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the best I'm going to get it. Anyway, you can see how uh, just by shifting all these different colors, I can between red, green, and blue, I can get many, many, many different colors uh, to show up on the screen. Once again, once you change colors, you have to kind of fiddle with the uh, contrast knob, unfortunately, just because certain colors uh, fight the... Uh, with the natural contrast of the LCD. Plus my knob's a little bit weird on this uh, Game Boy. I'm gonna have to go and fix that. You can see, like, I'm just like poking, I'm not even twisting it, and it's changing value. <laughs> so yeah, definitely need to give that a clean out. Anyway, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you uh, me having some fun with the, uh, the old Game Boy here. I just got in, well, I, I ordered, I will be getting it in, a uh, clear Game Boy Pocket as well. A second one. It's my second one. Um, that one I'll probably keep stock. I won't touch it like I have the other Game Boy. I'm you know, just poking this now. Anyway, um, you can see the screen, the entire screen works, everything. It looks better in real life, actually. Probably uh, the, the lens on this camera is not so great. Anyway, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that.